Hello and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer 40k. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Rogue Trader playthrough. Blind playthrough that is on unfair difficulty with a couple of bonus points. Even more unfair. The unfairest of all difficulties. Um, I wonder why the warp travel here is unsafe all of a sudden. Huh? That is strange because it used to be yellow and now it is unsafe. Anyways, we are in the Emperor's Palm. That is where a war council need to be held. And last uh, time we didn't have a really good fight. So maybe we're getting a different one or better one this time. Euphrates II. Lord Captain, the United Corps of the Explorers and the Militia Force is ready to attack the heretics uh, who took over Euphrates II. Uh, the commanders recognized Lord Inquisitor's sanctum and agreed to cede the right of supreme command to you. They ask you to summon a council of war. Okay, summon it. Consider it done, your lordship. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to find the right uh, momentum here and we're going to give it a go let's hear what uh, the problems on the planet are can't be that difficult to solve and uh, we'll find solutions very good the council is coming together oh another space marine oh another space marine hell yeah look at that Ulfar here and another space wolf over there. Fabulous. Unit Opticon 22 initiating identification. Official greeting procedure. Unlocking the option of strategy exchange. Thorbold Ironhide. Which of you whose cards is Saiken and Valencius? I am Thorbold Ironhide. And I wish to see the mortal who was greeted the honor and uh, was granted the honor of leading my pack into battle. I know the habits of a warrior when I see one. You are no indolent joker. Good. I give you my approval. We will hunt the sorry heretics together. <laughs> yes. Oh yes, we will. You haven't changed, brother Thorobald. I I believe Ulfar should potentially be more in a Scottish accent. I'm not good at Scottish accent, but here we go. You haven't changed, brother. Brother Thorobald. Appity and brazen without measure. You carry yourself on another drecker like this, if it is your own. Thorvald is like such a breed of leaders, Ulfar. We stand out. This is you, Everlost, who can find his way to the sun right over his head. All right, Opticon 22. Uh, how did you go from overseeing logistics to commanding armies? This command promotion hierarchy status update was executed following the death, decommissioning, deconstruction of the ship teeth of Ragar. The fleet was conclaved and was operating aboard the vessel. May the service be beneficial for the updated protocols that we bestowed upon you and the new ana analytical data that we entrust in your education. May the Omnisire guide operative this unit into course mission algorithm service to him. All right, let us uh, commence the war council. Uh, Torba says, well, what good is another war council with a cock priest who knows not the joys of battle, who cuts off a part and replaces them with augments to please his all-knowing master? We will promise again a cowardly plan, unworthy of warriors, is custom to his brethren. Registering a show of impertinence in regard of the military craft of Adeptus Mechanicus, Okay, I can see where the problem lies. Aisha, are you having another fight, gentlemen? How predictable. A uh, woman in power armor walks to the bridge, and with her an air uh, of superiority around her. You remember seeing her before in the retinue of Xavier Calcasar when he bargained you into the chambers of the Magni Ascensio. Thank you for not starting without me. 
acolyte Ashira dispatched by the Lord Inquisitor to facilitate the operation of uh, Euphrarus II. My privilege on the War Council is this of an advisor. Heinrichs and Ashara exchange glances, but do not say a word. You cannot help but notice the furrow that forms um, on the interrogator's forehead at a sign of his colleague. So, shall we begin the War Council or shall we rather wait for the heretics to corrupt the planet completely? I need a complete report. Euphorus 2 is a forge world. Manufactoriums and extractiums take up most of it. Upon disrupting their production algorithm, the heretics enhance the ranks uh, with possessed mechanisms and false shikari whose protocols were disfigured with indoctrinated scrap code. Our forces have been uh, have secured minor footholds on the surface but are unable to deliver an efficient blow to the headquarter of the profaners in the machine cathedral in the heart of the manufactorium sigma s13 according to the available data the cor uh, current location of the arc heretic is the dark angel apollos the uralon the cru uh, cruel all right that sounds like a fight that we could take thorbold is like we may outnumber the enemy but ours is a poor we may outnumber the enemy but ours is a poor warband all it has is steel curls of the armed sire and scantily trained serfs from across the expanse while our foe the detestable but nevertheless deadly putrid hatred traitors in the ranks of the world bearers and their vessels protect the machine cathedrals from orbit uh, Opticom, what uh, do you propose the plan should be? Our strategic analysis points towards a full-scale offensive as an optimal course of action. The losses amongst the troop may be numerous, but not exceed acceptable parameters. Replenishing such losses will be less orderous than restoring the damage that may otherwise come from the manufactoriums. Torbold, what would you, you do if you were to command this operation? Oh, I would rain down vengeance. Uh, vengeful skies upon the enemy, I would plough the land of your ferris with shells, shatter their defenses, level the fortified towers, throw their hosts into disarray, and, in the whirlwind of the fury, I would lead my glorious pack to pave the path of blood with cock curls. Okay, well, that does sound very different. One guy wants to do a full-fledged offense and the other one wants to do like a very stylish full-fledged offense I've heard your opinions on this um, I shall now present you with a plan of our assault on you Ferris too hmm do we want total annihilation? Do we want uh, to bombard and be careful? Or do we want a swick, uh, swift onslaught? I think um, the total annihilation sounds really, really good. Let's do that. Here, here, I can smell your killer instinct. Let us break their spirit. My pack will do all it has been asked. And Vanguard the assault until we meet on the field of battle. And I say the same to you, Ulfar Everfrost. Tis pity, uh, tis a pity, your pack will not share the glorious victory with us. Yeah, that boastful Grizov talks too much about my pack. He knows where my brothers are. I can smell it. Before we wish to dive into the carnage, summon him to your ship and let me question him. I wish to hear what he knows. While he still hasn't lost his blethering tongue to the heretics. Complying, correcting the primary mission parameters, removing the immunity status from the sacred facilities of the surface of Euphorus II. The Lord, Inquisi oh, the Lord Inquisitor will be delighted at the news that some semblance of what was established in command. I wish you a luck. Okay. So, where are all of uh, the guests? They seem to have left as quickly as uh, they have entered. All right, well, let's see what the problem really is. I mean, bombarding everything, not a bad plan.
The rogue trader's ship took its place in the center of the attack formation. The right flank was guarded by the sacred combat vessels of the Adeptus Mechanicus. The left consisted of the combined forces gathered by the Lord Inquisitor, headed by a frigate of the indomitable Space Wolves. The enemy developed uh, their ships in a wide arc and attempted to surround the squadron, uh, but the heretic's plan was uh, not mad, uh, meant to be. Thorbold and Opticon 22 sent their detachments forward, trying um, tying up the enemies in combat and presenting the Lord Captain with a chance to deliver a blow in the very heart of the enemy position where the flagship of these traitors to humanity awaited its final hour. Mwah. Space battle. Finally. All right. <clears throat> where are all of our friendly ships and why is there a massive blasphemous six class hunter? Holy smokes. Okay, we got Swift Death Fighters and a Blasphemous uh, Six Class Cruiser. Two lances, lots of batteries. I wish you could see the distance uh, that they could go. And then apparently can open warp rifts. Very fitting for. Uh, for a chaos, uh, for a chaos cruiser. Good. Let's focus on this little swift death fighter, shall we? One. That's a miss. Fantastic, at least that worked. Unleash your wrath upon my enemies. Uh, got them very nice. Uh, almost got them down. Can we turn them around? Target is invalid, but we can turn around the little fighters. Scan that thing. Couple of shields on this side, and um, maybe we're out of range here. Let's see. Oh, are you are you serious? You just flew through that thing. Uh oh, I think our. Frigate is going to go down. Yep. That was foreseeable. Alright, torpedoes. Crash right into them. Good. We're turning around uh, shields to the front uh, this time. I would love to launch a couple of torpedoes. Let the incandescent beam scorch our enemies. Good. Half of uh, the frigate is down. Um. Let's give the Master of Maneuvers cooldown reduction. Fantastic. That's the best we can do, unfortunately. Oh no, more Swift Death Fighters? I don't like it. Wow. Look at that. And we even have improved shields to the front. Not cool. All right. Um, let's scan this vessel. 
And the question is, how do we even get to here? Almost all of it will lead us through the warp, and I don't want that. So, if we were to jump, we'll jump right into the warp. Fantastic, that's a good hit. That's an excellent hit. Now all we need to do is turn around and keep going. Now we're going to take some damage. Not as bad as I thought it would be. You guys turn around so we don't need to face you. Uh, we're Can flying to here. And it is shield to the back. Let's go. Extra hit. Uh, these guys are tough to hit, man. Good, we're still keeping them behind us. these guys around. Nice little hit. Let the incandescent beam scorch our enemies. Got them. Oh boy, that was a tough fight. That big uh that big ship was super hard. And it spawned more of these small ones. Okay, first of all, hull repair. Second of all, we could upgrade to more hit points, which I would appreciate. But there are also other upgrades. Improved RAM, okay, got you. Sanctified restart. Now inflicts only minus two speed reduction, okay. Steady hand. When using post abilities, 20% chance. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Shorter cooldowns always good. Yeah, we're taking 50% uh, chance of shorter cooldown. That's excellent. In terms of posts, anyone who needs an upgrade? No. No, no, no. And we already got what I think is pretty decent gear. One reason why I wouldn't want to upgrade that is because it costs 860 scrap. I, w I rather want to keep that for a little bit later. All right. Uh, Ulfar, don't you close your ears to my word, Edvater, or we may quarrel. Before we go to the bloodiest of battles, allow me to summon the Im um, impudent boaster Torbald Arnheit to your ship. The word of uh, the Iron Priest can wait until the two wolves had spoken their words. Understand, Edvater, how important this conversation is. 
It is my hunting path, and we can either prowl together, or I shall walk it alone. I hope I heed my uh, I heed my words, for I wish to abandon your warband before my debt for being freed from the Xenos thraldom is repaid. All right. I will have you meeting with Torvald. Come to the bridge. That's better, Elfather. We'll talk to Brazen Blau uh, Blauhart first, and then crush the heretics later. I like it. I like it. The Space Wolves are no nonsense, just straight to the point. Ooh, two further Space Wolves. Hello. Torbald Ironhide is here. Why have you summoned me, Rogue Trader? Ah, speak to me. No, you, Torbald. Whither the pass of battle has led my pack? The baleful howl? I haven't lost your pack, have you ever lost? The young wolf's voice is strong and insolent and richly melodic. He tilts his head in a mocking concern, watching Ulf uh, Far's complexion change to match the violent shade of his hair. We did not have a chance to talk properly at the council. I wanted to meet you. Ha! Of course you wanted. Who would you miss the chance to strike up a friendship with the illustrious leader of the equally illustrious Stormbiters? Go on, Halbrad. Recite the saga of my exploits and make sure to include the landing in the Void Kraken's mouth. This is Halbrand the, B the Brave, the most sonorous voice in my pack. Thorbald nods said the tall wolf, who seems to radiate the proud vigor of a warrior. Ah, I think you're mean to say Halbert the braggart, no? For his verses often weave together the truth with his own fights of fancy. Uh, Ulfar smiles vindicatively with a vicious, utter, uh, utterly unbecoming of an angel of the emperor. Now it's Halbert's turn to blush. Um, Thorobald's uh, chuckles. Thank you for the correction ever lost. I reckon we can do without the saga. Why do you call Ulfar Avalost? You do not know? I am surprised Brother Ulfar does not care for the moniker. He has had it since his early years in the chapter. When Ulfar underwent his trial of the Cup of Wolven, he took so much longer than the others that the rune priests uh, gave him up for lost. Later he received grievous wounds in a raid that sent him to the stays asleep for a long time. Any time we would pay a visit to the Baleful Howl, we would ask, where is Brother Ulfar? And he was always resting. And recently, he went missing altogether. Lost after attack on Xenos. Thorbald uh, grins mockingly, his long fan, uh, fangs glinting. And forget not to tell of the dire curse that... Um, of yore was laid upon the mighty Ulfar. No good deed uh, for him is fated only to one day be lost, uh, bereft of glory and honor. Halban uh, declaims the line so sonorously and powerful that the bulkhead begins to vibrate. Any who cares to, uh, any who cares to cross his path, let him regal and gladly. Uh, that proud warrior, Halban Blatherkite, singer of rumors, and a fine debtor of tale, tall tales, for he has glimpsed no worthy deed in his short life. Do you know where Ulfa's pack is now? Feasting with the All Father in the Hall of Heroes, I reckon, with Mjoid filling their horns to the brim, as valor and loyalty did fill their hearts. Lies! Did you see their bodies? Which of the brothers would avow the truth of these words? Ironhide never lies. The young wolf arm uh, cuts through the air like an axe, angrily points his Ulfar. And you, ever lost, watch your tongue unless you want my dagger to deliver a penance of eternal silence upon you. No, we did not see their bodies, but we heard their ranting and raving, which can only lead to the jaws of Morokai. I would like to know the details. 
In the battle of which you lost, ever lost, Arnulf and Skjadjör were captured by the Xenos. The baleful Hall took prisoners on their own. Under torture, the captive Xenos gave up the star coordinates where they were go uh, going next. Some important meeting, it seems. The place was far away, deep into the uncharted regions where the servants of the Allfather have never ventured. And your brothers decided to go there. No navigator would dare to lead uh, them to those dark places, so your brother seized a trading boat and voyaged without a helmsman. So, you had banned them to their grueling march? Ulfar's voice drops in a menacing gap. Lower your hackles. I urged them not to throw where their lives in vain. Nothing but death could await them along those malevolent stars. We all came here to serve the Allfather and repay our blood debt. Not to die for not. Or have you forgotten that I have lost? Il Ulfa, what will you do with this knowledge? I will test. I uh, will not test our friendship, Edvetter. I know that if I call upon you to go with me and search the pack, I will be taking you away from an important battle of saving your home. So I will go alone to seek my brothers, but I will not abandon you or your uh, hour of need. I owe you. When we have defeated your enemies, I will leave you and follow their trail. That trail is bloody and has long gone cold, Brother Ulfar. There is no need for to add another body to its tally. As uh, the leader of the Stormbiters, I call you to our pack. Be a brother to us now. Have you lost your mind, Torbald? Uh, perhaps it is you who lost your mind. If you are daring to speak so insolently to Ironhide, Halbert's insinuating tone is dipping with such menace that even drawing off a sword could not have made that threat any clearer. Why do you want to Ulfa to join your pack? He's our brother. He should not be left to wander the galaxy in the companion of ordinary mortals or alone. Wolves are like sharp knives. We hone ourselves against, the, uh, against each other's and with our brothers, Ulfa will rust, uh, rust and grow dull. Be with us, Ulfa. We'll take you in. Ulfa's right. He's loyal to his brothers. Stay out of wolf business, rogue trader. I will not reveal the coordinates of a place which your brothers traveled. Respect your Alpha, Ulfa. That is an order. You are too quick to call yourself my leader, Torbag. Go and bark commands to your pups. Who are you calling a pup ever lost? Unlike you pathetic pack, we will soon go to battle and accomplish a great deed. But you, coward uh, that you are, want to shrink your duty? Duel, says Ulfa. All right, um, guys, what the fuck is going on? Why? B why? <sighs> Say nothing. Thorvald, quiet, both of you. Have you forgotten where you are? Holm game can only take place on solid ground, not on a boat. The Void and the Warp are treacherous and unfit to hold the duel of the worthy. And secondly, I am your superior, Ulfar, and so I am not asking but ordering you to back up your chest beating with deeds. The baleful howl pack is alive, as you say. Let it march with the stormbiters and an assault on you far as too. Let it display all the uh, valor its stories tell of. Will you stay alone for all of your brothers, or have you gone soft? Awareness test. The wolf leader's tone may be threatening, but you notice the sly glint in his eyes. Ulfar, on the other hand, is growling furiously with no matching twinkle. We'll see about that. I will prove that the Stormbiters will never be a match for the Bayful Hall. Hey, father, I must be on your side when you depart for the assault. Promise that you will grant me this honor. All right, we will march together. Okay.
if you prove your words carry more weight uh, than a battle axe, I will tell you where your brothers went. If you fail, you will submit. Hell yeah, alright. I like the battle. Great interaction, by the way. Totally like it. And finally we got mm, the Baleful Howl, a personal quest of Ulfar. A good one uh, to, uh, to add to that. I like the story writing. Okay. Uh, off we land and go to uh, the planet. All right, time for us uh, to land on Euphranius uh, 2. And we are starting a huge war. Unfortunately, they do it in story form because boy oh boy, would I have loved to have like a really massive battle with reinforcements, but uh, potentially not enough money. Anyways, as General once said, that all wars are fundamentally the same. If you've seen one, you've seen them all. Grok's shit. The general had not witnessed the events on Euphrates too. Rogue trader Sykin von Valencius was supreme commander in the battle, a man of iron will, unfaltering, unshakable. You're flattering me. Uh, I served in his personal enforcer guard back then and just another cocky kid who thought he was an expert soldier. The Emperor was gracious to me. He gave me a chance to realize just how wrong I was. Most of my comrades didn't get the chance like that. The shuttles would have blocked out the sun if one could have seen it through the smoke of the manufacturing city Sigma S13 in its heart stood the machine's uh, cathedral, our primary objective. Ignoring the protests of the veneered tech priests, the Lord Captain gave the order not to spare the world's infrastructure. We struck the sacred chaplain of Maglos Alchemist, triggering an emission of toxic gas. The noxious cloud blackened the enemy's position, but even that did not make the heretics retreat. By the time we fought our way to their positions, they were so weakened by the gas, they hung in the air that they showed us no resistance and surrendered in the hundreds, just to be killed afterwards because heresy is punishable by death. But okay, upon descending from orbit, Sister Argenta inspired the troops with the very first notes of her prayers. Her singing was the Emperor's voice commanding us to fight without any regards for our own lives. After rousing the soldiers to launch a daring raid, she quickly captured one of the heretic commanders. And that commenced a rapid tank assault in accordance to the military doctrine armored wave devised by Lord Militant Justin Quinn. We succeeded. As we began the advance, I will never forget the roar of the tank, its treats tearing the her heretic uh, infantry into pieces, accompanied by the shrieks of less guns and the rubble of heavy artillery. The deafening symphony of war. Nothing could stop us. We marched in the wake of a column of armored beasts not turning to look to the mushroom clouds climbing over piles of enemy bodies and those of our own we had our orders pushing through the ruins of the sacred workshop we looked with awe upon the machines that up until this point had remained forbidden to the eyes of the laity those were palaces of incredible frightening technology. Voidship assemblies, halls, alchemical atri atriums, sacred arsenals, generators producing invisible fields unsettling to the mind, and scriptoriums containing knowledge of horror best left undiscovered. In one of the chemical capitals, or chapels rather, we came upon a shipment of Sinterns containing hallucinous gas. The tech priests protested that the substance was not designed for warfare, 
that it was created for higher rituals, but the officers wasted no time pumping our artillery sh shells full of gas. At least we reached the gates of Dogmu 514, the threshold of the metal nightmare that uh, the Manifactorum Sigma S13 was. However, the initial attempts to storm the dock shattered against the enemy's defenses. There were several enemy commanders amongst the heretics we captured upon landing. They were eager to show us the exact locations of the enemy cogiators and provided us with decryption litanities to access the defense system. That was our. Uh, that was uh, the hour when we all thanked the Lord Captain for having made the wise choice of intimidating the enemy at first stage of the planetary assault. Magus Dominus Opticus 22 proposed a tech sabotage. He could send small um, uh, spirits into the area of the defense system. Thorbold, the fierce leader of the Space Wolf, proposed to send infiltrators beyond the walls, killing officers and weaken the dock de uh, dock's defense. Listen, intelligence is easy. Tech use is also easy. Let's go with uh, tech use. The intelligence we received from the captured cultists provided, uh, provided val uh, proved valuable. We knew exactly where to look for the heretic cogiators and how to gain access to them. It was part of an escort, one of the tech priest crews, uh, that broke into the dock to carry out the sabotage mission. It's one thing to watch a technomat weave a sensor over a cogiator on a cargo deck, but it is another to observe sacred tech rituals being performed under a hail of bullets and carpet bombings. The bihineric prayers, decryption litanies, and blessed crypto purification viruses did their work. Every turret in the vicinity instantly turned on the traitors, and the dock filled with gunfire and screams. When silence fell, the gate opened before us. It took us many days to break through the metal heart of the Manifactorium. On the third week of the assault, the vanguard was halted and swept away by a salvo of plasma macro cannons, scorching every cannon of sacred engineering the heretics had placed a hull of an unfinished void cruiser on a treads several kilometer long. This leviathan of adamantine and plat steel bared our way. Lodges Opticus 22 insisted that we retake the sacred machine, for the vessel had been in the making for many decades, and its destruction would have meant a great tragedy for the Imperium. The Lord Captain uh, send scouts to assess the fearsome uh, weapon. Um, and then... <laughs> Drop an entire void ship upon the cruiser from orbit. Mm, commanded that the sacred vessel to be reclaimed from the enemy's clutches. And we are successful. Having the sacred machine on our side could have given our offense a sizable edge. Our orders were to get landing forces to the cruiser, bridge and escort the engine seer to the main cogiator. Our shuttles use the turret's blind stop, deploy elite troops on board of the cruiser, and while we were engaged with shrieking heretics, the engine seer reasoned with the machine spirits of the machine cogiator and initiated the blessing purgitation protocol on the inner decks. It took us three days to drag every last cultist corpse out of the compartments. Slipping on pools of blood mixed with sacred unguents, we made it to the machine cathedral. Our gigantian hall Breathing with flames of thousand furnaces, the last bastion of the enemy's army, that was where I first faced the word bearers, betrayers of humanity and unworthy sons of the emperor. What could we mere humans possibly do to match the unholy bestial rage? Hmm. 
Well, that's a good question. Demolition is not bad, but demolition is a skill that is relatively low. I know that coercion is okay, and I think persuasion is even better. So devise a plan to place the space wolves at the forefront. Succeed. The Emperor's angels themselves led the charge that day. Magnificent in their rage, they forged a path for us to follow, and even the appalling champion of the arch enemy could not stop them. While we were distracted with the enemy's suppressive fire and a hail of grenades, our unyielding leaders charged the word bearers and tore them into pieces. We were the anvil of his wrath, and we uh, and they were the hammer. And that's when it came, Doom Scream, an ancient bloodthirsty hellbrood, a merciless executioner forged from the adamantine and cremateam. That single foe was repelling our souls one after the other, turning hundreds of soldiers into a bloody pulp. I think they mean this big thing back here. For as long as the abdomination lived, we had no hope of reaching the heart of the citadel. Okay, the third-eyed Torbald volunteered to track down and destroy the vile spawn, but fate had other things in store for him and his brothers. The Space Wolf pack was to be the first to storm the Machine Cathedral, and thus Magos Dominus Opticus 22 assembled a cohort of elite Skitari and uh, said that he would locate and eliminate, uh, eliminate the doom scream. And the soldiers were whispering that he was willing to activate the so-called guaranteed annihilation protocol, a terrible and ominous rite that is as lethal as the enemies of the Omnissiah to his faithful servants. Upon arriving at the front lines, the Lord Captain <coughs> uh, questions uh, the survivors <coughs> and we can either let Opticon 22 do his suicide mission or hunt down the ancient killing ma machine ourselves um, you know we're fighting ourselves what happened next would become legend. The Lord Captain at the head of the retinue challenged uh, the bloodlusting heresaic uh, that had crawled out of the darkness of time. He dealt the wicked executioner a heavy and mortifying blow and thus a doom scream was routed. The abomination torn pincer fitted with an ancient and powerful bolter um, became the rogue trader's rightful trophy. Holy smokes! But that's a heretical bro bolter. Eh. Eh. At last, we reached the machine cathedral. We saw a yawning lift shaft left behind by a colossal land gnawing drill that had borrowed for kilometers into the depths of the planet. There, deep below, lied the last hiding place of the heretics' leaders. Hundreds of grenades, accompanied by promises of swift judgment, were hurled into the pit. Such was our righteous anger. The planetary assault was re resonating success. The enemy forces were shattered and broken. A small fraction remained in the machine cathedral, but the rest either had been destroyed or were destined to meet the same inevitable fate soon. The Lord Captain's retinue and the Space Wolf band delved into the chef headed towards the heart of the machine cathedral. We watched them leave with revenants in our eyes as we were setting up parameters around the entrance. We knew that the true outcome of the Battle of Eurytus too depended on them, that our fate were theirs to decide. Oh yes, we get our fight. And we take the Prime Team with us, including Ulfar. Ulfar, my man, you are so welcome to join us. All right, let's go, heretic slaughter. You know what? I'll be an absolute tease this time, since we already are far beyond uh, the half hour, at least 
according to my estimations we're going to do that the next mission i know i know what a clickbait uh, that we are storming the entire planet and then cycling is not delivering but i do have my reasons for it i want a clean and proper fight down here so bear with me just one more uh, time we're going to do it uh, the next time and we're going to do it properly so with that thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed uh, the rp and narration part as well um, as the fights and we're going to see each other in the next episode take good care